Um, just doing this little educational video to teach you about how to do a simple family of faith talk at home. If you need, um, there's a little printout sheet that you can pick up in the children's area to go along with this video to kind of for you to keep notes on that you can refer back to later when you're trying to do your own family faith talk at home. Um, recently, you'll see it over the past few years, I've been doing our own family faith talk every now and then. They kind of look like this. This is the one from the Lord's Supper. Um, we do one usually with our More Than a Movie Summer program, Discovery Month, Christmas. So at least once a quarter, these are coming out. And so I wanted to make sure that you understood how you can do it, how simple they really are, and how you can continue to do ones besides the ones that I give you every few months. So ours um, will follow a similar format to the book I'm going to refer to as well. So let's talk about it, how to do a simple family faith talk at home. And I got it from this great book called 52 Creative Family Time Experiences. Fun Ways to Bring Faith at Home by Timothy Smith. Um, I actually wanted this for Christmas for our family, and so I've already done like the reading part of it, and that's basically today the information I'm going to give you so that you don't have to take the time to read it. I'm going to um, simplify it and hit the high points. Um, the great thing about this book is, like it says, it has 52 basic family faith talks that are really easy to do. They've done the work for you. So that this doesn't have to be some big challenging thing or scary thing to do or I don't have time to do it because it's pretty much done it for you and he's done an excellent job. Um, I'm also going to have in the children's area available the example of the first chapter. So you can kind of see how it works for your family at home. Do it yourself before you go buy the book. But I highly recommend this resource for you. Um, you can get it on Amazon or um, CBD. Alright, so the first thing he talks about is peanut butter families, which at first I was like, what? But I really like it. He basically asked the question, what would happen in our families if we had peanut butter faith that's tasty, nutritious, simple, and sticky? And this fall, we are all going to be talk we're going to talk about sticky faith the whole time in the children's ministry. So this kind of goes right in with that. And he refers to Deuteronomy 6, verses 5 through 9. And I've said these verses to y'all all the time, so you can look them up yourself. They are also on the little worksheet handout. Um, but it's just talking about where God tells us, basically, as parents, that we are the ones responsible for getting our kids' knowledge about the Bible, teaching them about Jesus and God. And although I enjoy doing it, I only have your kids a few times a week. And so um, the cool thing about this verse is he points out all the teachable moments that we have during the day. Um, that God tells us, you know, when we're at home, when we're out and about, when it's in the morning, when it's at bed, night, um, when we're eating dinner. And so the verse itself kind of tells us and gives us places where we can do um, different kind of teachable moments. Um, the other resource I'm going to tell you about before we go any further is his website for this book. Um, it is www.creativefamilytimes.com. It's on your worksheet as well. Um, it's a really good, he has a good blog, as well as, it also has a link to some videos of his. So he updates the blog, like there might be something for Father's Day specifically, like um, a family's faith talk for that. And so it's, he's got resources on that page as well. So the book kind of starts out talking to you about the six different types of learners. And I believe we have talked about these before, but I just want to refresh you on these because it's important to know what type of learner your kid is before you start doing these family faith talks. Because, you know, if your kids are more tactile learners, you need to make sure you have hands-on things planned. Now, he does a great job in this book of kind of changing up every so often. You know, one might be more directed toward visual learners, where one might be more tactile. So it's something that you need to keep in mind as um, you reach towards your kids. So while we go over these learners, kind of be plugging in your mind which kid's which. So the first type of learner is touch, meaning just a tactile learner. They need to feel something. So my example for this is um, a month ago when we did Discovery Month, our family faith talk to connect. It talked about making slime together. And so um, that was something that me and Eason did. It's on the example video of how simple a family faith talk can be. And um, we were talking about Jonah. And so we made the slime, and we were talking about how slimy it probably was inside the big fish. And so it helped for Eason to actually 
feel that slime and make it and touch it, for him, it connects and helps him learn better and will help him to remember. Um, there's visual learners. These people need symbols. They need to see words or pictures, you know, actually a picture of the story. So for Jonah and the Big Fish, they need to see a picture and kind of get an idea of what it might look like. You know, you can get a picture of a whale shark. It's a really big fish with a person next to it to kind of help them understand how that could happen. Um, another thing with visual learners is sometimes they need to see objects. And so another great example of this was in Discovery Month when we were doing Jonah and the Big Fish. We did a fish guts activity where we put everything that you might see in the belly of a well inside a mason jar. And it was, you know, anchovies and sardines and tomato sauce and grass for seaweed. And then we, um, we you know, mixed it all up. And then they could visually kind of see that part of what happened to Jonah. They're verbal learners. Um, they're all about word-oriented. Um, so for them, reading the Bible is really important. You know, they need to be the one to read it, not just you reading it to them. Um, they're very helpful. They need to see the words. So, you know, putting, um, painting memory verses out on a piece of paper so that they can see them or um, putting them on their bathroom mirror with um, dry erase markers. Those type things are really great for, visual, for verbal um, learners. They also need to hear it. So... Those are good. Auditory, they are completely, they need to just hear to learn. Um, so this one might be the better one that you read the Bible to because they just need to close their eyes and listen to the story and visualize it through what they're hearing. They also are the ones that learn better through music. Um, they're the ones that need to verbally quote scripture. Um, they're also the ones that need to hear words of affirmation from you. And so auditory learners, um, any time that you maybe can have someone even go online and get a copy of someone else reading that part of the Bible um, or having them just close their eyes and imagine what they're listening to. Um, sense of smell. Smell is another type of learner. And, um, of course, everyone usually generally knows that sense of smell is greatly tied to memory, and so that is going to help connect the kids to what they're learning. Um, and so the, an example we already talked about was with Joan and the Big Fish. Um, when we did the fish guts activities, you know, when you open that jar up and take a big whiff, it kind of greatly helps you know, hey, Jonah probably smelled this for worse for three days when he was in the belly of the fish. Um, the sardines will definitely stink up your house, but it will get the point across. And another example might be when the woman was pouring perfume on Jesus' feet and you're talking about that act of worship. You know, getting a bottle of perfume and letting the kids smell it, um, that's a great way to engage those type of learners. And the last type of learner, the sixth type, is taste. And so for them, it's all about food and eating, and I think we can all agree that's a great way to learn. So for example, if someone who is that kind of learner, um, you could do something like when the Israelites crossed the desert and they had nothing to eat and God provided them manna and quail, you could have a dinner of like bread and chicken. Um, and do your family faith talk to help um, these kids connect the story better. So if you engage them in these ways, um, your particular learners, you're going to help them to remember God's Word better. And so just kind of plug in and think, oh yeah, my child is this, or my child is that, and keep that in mind when you're doing your family faith talks. The next thing I want to talk to you about that he mentions in his book is the three kinds of moments to influence your kids. Um, the first kind is just informal. They're daily moments, you know, that come about as you're riding to school in the morning, as you're eating your meals at your table. They're, they're what I call teachable moments. It's just when things come up and happen that you can use um, to talk to your kids about God. And it's so great that if you, you know, take the time just to pray and ask God to show you them, you know, He will show you them. And it's really cool when it comes up. It sometimes will bring tears to my eyes when I realize, oh, I can connect this. Um... So something as simple as you know you're gardening maybe or um, we are here at the house and we're planting sunflowers. And so me and Easton are talking about how God makes things new and how God created everything from, you know, the tiniest bug to the biggest tree and in ourselves. And so stuff like that, just using the little bit of stuff that you have planned throughout the day or that comes up to teach. It's no prep necessary. It's just kind of, you know, paying attention to what's going on around you. Then there's the intentional family times, which is what we're mainly talking about today. That's family faith talks. That's where you actually set 
you're intentional. You set aside a time each week to sit down as a family and have a more formal Bible study. Um, it can be weekly or bi-weekly. It's just that it's set aside. There's a little more prep to it, although this book has helped make it way easier. And then the third time, these are more very spread out. They're not as often. Or milestones, using holidays or rites of passages um, to connect with your child about what they're currently going through in their spiritual life. And it can be things like, hey, our, our kids turn in 10. To me, that's a big deal. They're no longer in uh, single digits or they're, become, they're becoming a preteen. And then you have them when they're turning 13 and becoming a teenager. Um, when they're going to drive, getting their driver's license, or for the first one who's now going to kindergarten, there are rites of passages that we can mark and at the same time take that time to talk about what God's doing in their life. And there are other great books like The Legacy Path by Brian Hayes that talks more about the milestone and how to address those in your family. So I highly recommend that one. But today we're going to again focus on the family faith times. So the first thing I would encourage all of y'all to do is develop a family faith plan. And don't think I'm just like, you got to do family like um, lesson plans. It's not yet. It's just kind of a little chart that I'm going to give you that if you do it, it's going to help you become more aware of how you can meet your kids and actually fulfill what the Bible tells us to do in Deuteronomy 6. So it includes um, the six different learning styles and the moments of influence that we talked on based on Deuteronomy 6. And so it kind of puts them in a chart where you go together. It's designed to provide you with 36 impression points, moments in the day, for parents to talk and monitor your faith in the natural flow of your, of your family. And what's great is you, if you know you have a top to learner, and there's an example of this chart on the back of your worksheet, it also came in this great book, um, and it says Family Faith Plan, and it already gives um, an example. So if you know that your child, let's say, is a very visual learner, and so it talks about, you know, when you get up in the morning, you might um, compliment your child's choice of hair, clothing, etc., and at night, since they're visual, where did you see God show up today? Very simple things that you can do throughout the day. And so it's got those there for you. And so you can just pinpoint for your particular child which you need to address and what you can do throughout the day to do that. Um, it also, I gave you the blank copy that you can do for your own family. And that's what I'm talking about, developing a family faith plan. Um, things that particularly will work for your family that you can add to it. So um, that I encourage you to do before you're doing your family faith talk. This will help you do those informal, teachable moments throughout the day. And then the rest of the book is going to help you with those more intentional times. So let's talk about those intentional times real quick. And he gives some really great tips on how to get started. So the first one is just that you do have to invest some time for these intentional moments. Um, so you have to set a time weekly to get together and have a family faith talk. And he suggests if you're too busy to start and do every week, do every other week. I even have the suggestion of, you know, sometimes we cancel church on Sunday nights when we have potluck every um, month. And so those Sunday nights, sometimes we don't have church. Instead, you can do a family faith talk. What's great is most of these are set up to be 20 minutes. So usually, you know, you're at church an hour, so you do your family faith talk for 20, and you still have an extra 40 minutes to just relax together as a family or do whatever it is that you need to do that night. So I think that's a great way to start is doing that and then building yourself up if you need to if you're just too busy. Um, the second thing you have to do is prepare. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of prep. It's basically just reading over every single one of these is basically two pages. It's just reading over it and going, okay, these are the materials I need to do this family faith talk. And just reading over the scripture that it deals with so that you're prepared to talk with your children. Um, the third tip is to protect your family time. Um, for 20 minutes, like I said, it's just 20 minutes, eliminate all distractions. And I know that can be really hard with cell phones and stuff. And so one thing that I recommend doing, we do this on our preteen retreats often, is um, we have a cell phone basket. And during the times of Bible study, the cell phones go off and they go in the basket. And then when they're done, then they can get them back out. And you can do the same thing 
with your family faith talks. It's even some families have gone as far as to say during dinner, hey, this is a no, a no electrical device time, and you put it in the basket, and when it's over, it's done. And so that helps eliminate distractions. Um, you know, making sure the TVs are off, any Game Boys, iPads, things like that. Um, that they're just turned off and you just have 20 minutes of um, connectivity between one another. The fourth thing is, you know, customize it for your kids. And we talked about adapting for learning styles. But the other thing is that you adapt for ages. Now, the great thing that I absolutely love about this book is that at the end of every um, Family Faith Talk, like, for example, this one, Life is Worship, it has adapting for and it has younger kids and teens. So what's great about this is if your kids really span the age gap or you just have teenagers or you just have, like, preschoolers, this book is designed mainly for school-age kids, but it tells you how to adapt it for those kids. So say you have one school-age and one teen, it already tells you how to make it relevant for both of them and so that you don't have to sit there and figure out that extra step. So I, I like this book, again, for that um, difference in things. My family faith talks that I create for you, don't exactly have that luxury because they're mainly made for school age kids, but these are definitely made for any group. So whether you have, like I said, a three-year-old all the way up to a 17-year-old, you can still do these family faith talks. All right, and then the last one is, you know, honor each other by having each family member present. That just means, you know, saying, hey, yes, we are going to commit that, you know, at this time on this night of the week, we are all going to be here. And it might not be a night, you know, it might be something that y'all need to do at breakfast or um, a lunch on a weekend or something. That y'all sit down and that you make a commitment to everyone is going to be there um, as much as possible for that. And I'm sorry, I forgot. There is one more rule. Is it just that you're flexible and have fun? If you look at the example video, you can see how very, even our intentional moment was very informal because we have a four-year-old. And so it's not exactly easy to be like, to sit down and really control that energy. And so while we're making it, we're talking about Jonah the Big Fish and we're rereading to Ethan um, from one of his Bible stories. And then we're asking him the questions as we do the connection activity. So um, you just have to kind of be flexible and figure out what works best for your family. And so, like I said, the great thing about it is that's how simple it is. Now, I just want to tell you kind of how these are formatted. And then you can, like I said, pick up your example copy. Um, if you would like to see the book, feel free to flag me down at church, and I'll let you lend it to you. And you can kind of look over the formatting yourself. So, on our Family Faith Talks, every time we pass them out, it kind of has a topic and a key verse or a memory verse. Um, to tell you what this one's going to be about, and it even tells you how to use it. You know, use this one before participating in the Lord's Supper. And it'll, it, so it tells you that. And then we always have four connect, four things. We have a connection part that just wants you to get together and connect as a family, you know, distraction-free. Um, I always like to give you choices. All, you don't have to just do the choices on here. Um, they go along, it goes to, usually along with the lesson. You can come up with your own. Um, but it's things like on this Lord's Supper, you know, parents talk about the first time you took the Lord's Supper, what age you were, why you participate, how you felt, why it's important, just a connection time for them. If you have pictures of it, share it with them. Um, have a special family dinner, to kind of like to prepare them for the Lord's Supper. Um, get their family members involved in meal planning, things like that. So it's just to connect you as a family. And then the explore section is where you actually dig in the meat and get into a Bible study. And see, what's great is you don't even have to do all this at the same time. You could do a connection one night, and then the next night do the explore. And then even the next night do the transform section. And the transform section is basically, to me, is an application. You know, okay, we read this scripture. Now, how is that going to influence our life? How are we going to apply God's word? And... Um, I always reference James, you know, 122. It talks about being doers of the word, not hearers only. And so, you know, we try to give you examples there. And, of course, you can come up with your own. And then I always end mine with prayer. Um, you know, how you can pray together as a family about what we ju you just learned. And so these are kind of ours. His is set up to very similar um, kinds of sections. Um, this one, for example, is set up for Valentine's Day, so he does have some that are holiday-oriented. 
It has a main point and materials. It has a warm up, which is kind of like our connection. It has then the Bible reading. It has an activity, family discussion, then um, the adapting for, and then of course it ends with prayer too. So they're very simple. They're very great. Um, and I would highly recommend it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, and like I said, pick up the resources in the children's ministry. There's a board that says for parents only, and you can pick them up there. And I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.